Hello students, this is Professor Samwanshi from the Computer Department from South Sundarbhai Manik Adasur Polytechnic, SAS Ahmednagar. So students, today we are going to start with the third practical of our subject that is nothing but object-oriented programming using C++. So students, in today's program, we are going to see the concept of array of objects. So we are going to start with the practical and the name of practical is write a program that implement a class and create array of objects. So let's start the session. Now students, what is mean by array of objects that we have already seen? So the array of variables that are of the type class are called as array of objects. That means whatever the variables of type class, those are nothing but the array of objects. So suppose students, here I have taken one class staff, then I have created two data members that is name and post. Now in the public access specifier, I have taken two functions. The first is get data function and the second is nothing but put data function. Now suppose student here, I have to create the five objects of particular class. So then I will have to write staff and then I will have to write S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. And then after that, I have to call the get data and put data function from all of these objects. For example, s1.getData, s1.putData, then s2.getData, s2.putData, then again s3.getData, s3.putData, similarly for all s4 and s5. So here there are only five objects. So what will happen if there are 10 or 20 or hundreds of objects? Suppose we want to develop a college management system and for that purpose, we will require the data of 100 students or 10 staffs or 15 staffs. Okay, then we will have to create 15 or 20 objects and I will have to write the sentence staff S1, S2, S3, S4 up to S10 and I have to call get data and put data for S1 dot get data, S2 dot get data, S3 dot get data, S4 dot get data. So this will be a ridiculous or tedious task. So in order to avoid this stuff, we are going to create array of objects. So here I have taken the class staff, then S is nothing but the object and after that I have given the size. So here I have given the size phi u, that means that this statement will create array of phi u staffs, it will create the array of phi u staff, okay. So S0, S1, S2, S3 and S4, this phi u object of class staff will be created. Now I have to call get data and put data function. So for that purpose, we will require one for loop because I have to call get data function five times. I have to call the put data function five times means I have to call the same function or I have to repeat the same statement for five times. And if I have to perform any repeated performances or repeated actions for that purpose, we require the for loop. So here I have taken one for loop for i is equal to zero, i less than phi u, i plus plus. Why I have taken less than phi u? Because the number of objects are phi u. Suppose there are 10 objects, then I would have taken here i less than 10. If there are 15 objects, I would have taken here i less than 15. Then s of i dot get data. We know whenever we want to call any function, then we have to use this dot operator. Okay. So s of i dot get data means when the value of i is zero, then it will call s of zero dot get data. After incrementation, i plus plus, this i value will become one. Then the statement will be s of one dot get data. Again, the value of i will be incremented. It will call s of two dot get data. Again, the value will be incremented s of 3 dot get data and finally s of 4 dot get data means this get data function will be called from all the five objects in this single for loop in the similar way 
we have to call this put data function five times so again i have taken the for loop for i is equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus and again i have called s of i dot put data so in this way we have seen the concept of array of objects now we are going to implement the c plus plus program using this array of objects so here i have taken a new file first i will save the file so i will write the name array of objects dot cpp so here the array of objects is the name of my file and dot cpp is nothing but the extension so first i will include the header file so i will write hash include io stream dot h then i will write hash include conio dot h so these are the two header files that we require every time then i have to create the class so i will write class staff and in the class staff i will require the two data members first is name so i will write character name here i will give the size suppose 20 and second i will require another data member that is nothing but character post so here again i have given the size 20. now in the public access specifier I will require two functions and those are nothing but void get data and void put data. So here I will write void get data and in void get data the body of void data I have to accept the value of name and post. So I will write C out enter name and post then I will use the statement c in name end l end l statement is used for the new line then the second variable will be post so in this way in get data function i have accepted the value of name and row name now i have to display the data so void put data function i will use in void put data i will write c out name is name then i will use end l for the new line now c out post is post then again i will write end l so i have used this put data function to display the data of name and post so when the put data function will be called then the name and post will be displayed so here now i am going to close the class so for that purpose i will require semicolon now i will use void main function as we know because we have to create every object inside void main function so in void main function first i have to create the array of object so our class is staff I am going to use the name of object as s and here I am going to the I am going to give the size that is nothing but 5 that already we have seen. So staff s of 5 is nothing but s is the object of class staff. So it is not only one object there are total 5 objects it is the array of objects. Now I have to use for loop and within for loop I will require one variable so here I will declare the variable integer now within for loop the for loop will be for i equal to 0 then i less than 5 i plus plus and now here in the for loop we have to call this get data function so i will use s of i s of i dot get data in the similar way we have to call the put data function five times so again i will use the same for loop for i equal to 0 then i less than 5 semicolon i plus plus again in the put data function we have to call 
in the for loop we have to call put data function so here i will do it right s of i dot put data and the last statement after the for loop will be get ch so in this way we have written the program of array of objects first we have created in the first statement we have created the class staff then we have created two variables that is name and post then we have to take on two functions get data and put data in get data we are going to accept the value of name and post in put data i am going to display the value of name and post after that i have created one function void main function then i have to create the array of object the syntax is class name first i have to use this class name staff then i have to use the name of object and i have to give the size then integer i variable i have taken in the for loop i is equal to 0 i less than 5 why less than 5 because there are total five objects so i have taken i less than 5 and then if you want to call the function get data we will require this dot membership operator so i will write s of i dot get data and in the next for loop i will write s of i dot put data now once again i am going to save the program now we have to compile the program so i will use compile so there are total six errors what are the error so first we are going to find out the error so unable to open include file iostream.h means here h is missing so here first i will write iostream.h so in this program we are also going to find out what could be the possible errors okay so again i am going to compile there is only one error and that error is illegal structure operation because here in the c in statement i have used end l so end l is not allowed in c in again i will compile so here it is showing there is no any warning and there is no any error that means that we have successfully compiled our program now we are going to run the program so i will click on run menu so here first it will ask enter name and post so suppose i have entered the name ramesh and then i have entered the post as principal then second it is going to ask me the name and post of second object so suppose the second object i have written as name as akshay and the post i have entered is hod then it will ask me the name and post of third object so suppose i have entered the name as ashish then i will enter the post as lecturer then again it is going to ask me the name and post of fourth object so suppose i have entered the name as swapnil and again i have entered the post as lecturer again it is going to ask me the name and post of fifth object so suppose fifth object the name i have taken gorak and then i have entered the post as system admin so now this name and post will be stored into five objects and when i enter it is going to show or display the name and post of all those five objects so when i enter it it the first it is showing name is ramesh post is principal name is akshay post is hod name is ashish post is lecturer name is swapnil post is lecturer name is gorak and post is system admin so in this way we have accepted and display the data of five staff members using array of objects